let me show you how you should start learning scraping and what skills you really need. I think you might be surprised with what you can achieve with just basic Python knowledge. I'll cover what to look for first, how to extract data without having to pass through complicated HTML tags that change all the time, and how to save the data quickly and easily ready for you to work with. But first, why are most of the top search results for learning scraping just not that useful? Let's look at one of my old tutorials. We make a simple request, return some HTML, pass the basic tags, and output some data. Whilst this works in some cases still, generally the modern web doesn't function like this. To understand the method I'm going to show you, we need to look at how most modern sites work. Hydration is a term used to describe the way the front end page is updated with data. This data can be requested in a few ways, but the most common is a fetch or an XHR request to the back end system. This is important as this request and the backend API is what we want to use to get the data to. As both of these systems are separate and are communicating through HTTP requests and JSON, there's very little stopping us from mimicking the same request. Although there are measures that site creators take and we will touch on that later. So what I want to do now is I want to show you an actual practical example of this, how to find this backend API, how to use it and how to manipulate it and importantly how to get the data out quickly and easily using Python. It's important to be forward thinking with any scraping project and plan out as much as you can, including which proxies are going to work best for the target sites. With Proxy Scrape, we have access to high quality, secure, fast, and ethically sourced proxies that cover residential, data center, and mobile proxies with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use, all with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. My go-to is either geo-targeted residential proxies based on the location of the website or the mobile proxies as these are the best options for passing any anti-bot protection on the sites. And with auto-rotation or the sticky sessions, it's a go-to first step to help avoid being blocked. It's only one line of code to add to your project and then we can let Proxy Scrape handle the rest. Also, any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need and it doesn't ever expire. But if you prefer data center proxies though, Proxy Scrape has you covered there too. It's unlimited bandwidth with 99% uptime and no rate limit, and IP authentication makes them a great option for the right use case. So if this all sounds good to you, go ahead and check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. Now on with the demo. This is a good example of what I mean. A lot of big e-com sites are like this. First thing that you should always do when you're trying to get data from a site like this is go to inspect, hit network tools, and make sure you're on the fetch and XHR tab. And then you want to start clicking around, moving, generate those extra responses, the requests and the responses, and you can see all this stuff's coming up over here. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to focus on this for a little bit so we can uh, zoom in here. And a bit too far, let's have a look at one of these. Now what we are generally looking for is something that's going to be JSON data, so these ones for example, and something that looks like it's going to have good information in the response. Now in this case here, these are the um, product IDs, like the SKU I suppose, for this information. So this is going to have pretty much everything in it, I believe. We've got images, we've got like the name, the title, uh, price of whatever, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, there's a few different ways that you can find this. You can either you scroll, you can hit next page, you can click on things. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this up. I'm going to click on the product and we're going to find some different information now here. So what I've got here instead is not only do I have uh, some product information, I've also got this availability. Now this is essentially if we go to here the request look at the request url above my head it's hitting the api products then this, this uh, code here and then availability and it's returning this information the size and whether it's available or not like we can see this information here all neat json so what's great about this is that we could potentially you know take this this request here and give it a different product ID and get that information out instead. But what we also have, if I scroll further down, is we've got things like um, extra, we've got recommendations here, we've got all sorts of things, there's loads of images. I guess these are related products that it's loading up. Uh, let's have a look at some of this. What's this? Mm, page detail, navigation information. Uh, and here's the actual full product information itself. So how do we 
take this and make this request ourselves. Well, there's a couple of things that we need to consider. We need to consider the headers that are going to be important. So I just scroll up. You can see behind me here, there's these cookies and everything like this. This is all very important because this is kind of like our pass to getting this information. What I always tend to do first is I'll go ahead and come over to get the request URL. I'm just going to copy the request URL and I'm going to come out of full screen here. I don't know why it's doing this. I'm just going to go and paste this into the browser that I've been using for the request. I'm going to hit paste. Now this has worked. So this is basically now I know that my browser, which has all of these headers and the cookies and everything, has just made this request again and we're fine. The next thing you want to do is open up something like in your terminal curl. Now this is going to be a very, very good representation because this is a very like basic raw request. And so if this goes through, we know that, you know, we are basically got the easy mode, but this one doesn't. So what we're going to do next is come back over to here and go and grab the whole request, copy as curl here. Then we're going to head over to the curl converter and we can paste this in here. That's not the right thing. I meant to copy the curl. I'm going to paste this in like so. And now we've got Python code that has all of these cookies and headers and everything in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all this to clipboard. I'm going to come back over to my code here, we'll clean this up, and we'll just create a new uh, quick Py file. And we'll just call this one like so. And paste this in. And we've got all of this in here now. So if I close this and we do Python Py uh, this, Oh, I didn't print it out. Oh, my bad. Go to the end of the file and then do print uh, response dot JSON. And then we run this. Oh, we're getting an error. So this is interesting. And I wanted to show you this one for a reason because a lot of times when you find this, this will go through and you'll be fine. But in this case, it isn't. And there's a few reasons for that. I'm going to just print out the response dot text first and we'll just go ahead and do this and we'll see we're getting access denied. Now, what this is doing is this is essentially taking the fingerprint information from our actual uh, Python request. It's, it's noticing it and it's not giving us that pass. This is a little, this is probably less common than you think it is. So what we want to do is we want to use a different library. So I'm going to come back over here and instead of requests, I'm going to use curl CFFI. So I'm going to do from uh, curl CFFI. We're going to import in requests. Now this works by uh, letting us impersonate the fingerprints of a browser, and it removes a lot of the um, kind of you know um, telltale signs from just requests. So we can just put in impersonate in here, and we'll put in Chrome 120, and we'll see where we get to. We need a comma, and we need to fill this fill this this one. No, it's there. So now I'm going to save this. We're going to come back out. And we're going to try it again and we'll see we got the information now when i mentioned at the start of the video where i said that there is bot protection that can happen that was exactly one of them and that's why this was a good example so what happened just to summarize is that when we made the request with our uh, standard requests even though we had all of the good cookies and headers and everything like that the fingerprint that was given away by requests uh, python requests was enough for the site to say hang on i don't like this and send us an access denied however when we use curl cffi which gives us the access to those good fingerprints from the browser we were able to use that along with all the cookies and it basically then allowed us to get that information out from here what we could do is then essentially whilst our cookies are still good we should be able to change this to a different uh different product code let's see if i can just find this one for example um how do i, I just want to copy this out i'll be this one maybe this one will work come back over here let's put this in here and run this again and we now have that information instead, which is this graphic t-shirt, whereas the first time round was all of this stuff and it was shoes, which is why it's more information because I get more sizes, campus shoes. So this is essentially it. This is how you have to start web scraping in these times, the modern times. There is no point trying to go to this site and trying to pass the HTML because either it's just not going to be 
not going to exist in the way that you want it to, or you're going to spend so much time and effort trying to pass this stuff out with HTML tags. It's just not worth it. So go to inspect, find the requests that are being made from the backend API, and then go ahead, copy the copy them out, try them in the browser, try changing them, then try them with curl in your terminal, then try it with Python requests using the curl converter. If you're still getting blocked, you'll need that extra fingerprinting, go ahead and use the um, uh, curl CFFI package in Python to get your browser fingerprints sorted and go ahead and just carry on from there. Expand on that, use proxies where you need to, go ahead and launch a browser to get new good cookies if you need to. And that is how you should always start a web scraping project. So if you like this and you wanna know more about this method, you wanna watch this video next where I use it to actually scrape this site.